Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another live stream. Uh, today we are joined by an esteemed guest. Hutch, you just went off camera. Your camera disappeared, but we are joined by oh, yeah. Hutch. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, just quickly, while we're waiting for Hutch's camera to come back on, everyone, can you just let me know in the stream, how is the sound sounding? Specifically, Hutch's sound, must I put it down a bit or put it up? So maybe Hutch, just introduce yourself quickly. Yep, let us know how the sound is so that uh, that we're calibrated well and you're not hearing one person whisper and the other scream, and uh, we'll be sure to manage that on our end as well. Awesome, awesome. So, Hutch, um, you are here today on stream, and okay, so we've got, a, we've got a comment saying it's loud. Let me just take your volume down about 75%. Let me check that. Everyone, please just continue telling me if it's loud or not. Uh, I've, I've pulled it down a little bit. But yeah, Hutch, you're here today on stream because we're going to build a few scholarship teams for you. Um, so very exciting stuff. Uh, you're looking to expand a bit, get a few more scholarships on board. And it's a good time that we started now. We tried last week. Uh, or was it two weeks ago already? I can't even remember. I think it was two weeks ago. Um, but a new update is out, a new meta. So it might have been good that we waited this long because now we can actually get the new meta. Um, yeah. yeah. God is good. And uh, we've got a, a few teams that are already built. So you, we've gotten your input on that. So thank you very much for that assistance. And we've got a few more that we're going to build. And I, I love that we're living in a time where people from across the globe can connect and play a game and everybody benefit economically. How cool is that? I mean, just think about that for a second, about how, what a world we're living in where that's even a possibility. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would have never guessed I would have found a friend that's living in Florida, America, by playing a, a video game online. And I'm actually, you know, here helping you live on the stream uh, where you can hopefully help other people. So yeah, that's, uh, it's an awesome feeling, awesome feeling. Um, so just for our viewers, um, so the teams will be, uh, be building today. Uh, Hutch is looking to give those away as scholarships. We're gonna try and build some very strong teams for you. Um, he has built this awesome website where you can actually apply for the scholarship instead of your normal, you know, tag me on Twitter or do a Discord chat or something like that. He's built a site and Hutch, do you maybe want to talk us through the site a bit more and the reasoning why you actually went and, and built a site for this? Yeah, for sure. So it's it's play to earn scholars .com and, and if you could drop that link in the uh, the chat, that'd be awesome. But uh, but basically as a manager, I found it was very cumbersome to go and try to uh, find a scholar that was serious about play to earn. Uh, and uh, trying to weed through those folks. And I'm sure as scholars, it can be frustrating trying to find a manager that is there to treat them fairly and treat them well and build a long-term full-time employment position. So what we did is we created a watering hole, playtoearnscholars.com, that can bring those parties together it's kind of uh, centralized a bit so it can be regulated and make sure people are being treated fairly and, uh, and establish these relationships. And we set up a specific job posting for this uh, uh, Axie Explained live stream. So what you're going to need to do is go in, go to playtoearnscholars.com. There's a button there. It stands right uh, very bold for you of, uh, you know, scholars register here. You do that and then apply for the job and you are in the drawing for potentially, Andrew, I think we're up to like four or five scholarships now for this. Awesome. So I'm super excited to be able to bring that to your audience. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Arch. And everyone, so I dropped the link in the, in the chat description. It's a pinned message at the top. So if you're ever looking for it, just scroll up the chat and you'll find it play to earn scholars.com um, I actually really liked it the reason why I like it this much Hutch and something we can actually take to uh, the rest of the community um, is people have been trying to find a way to make sure that the scholars are vetted that we don't get multi accounters um, all of this and I love the way that you're approaching this because first of all it brings a bit of stability or a bit of accountability from your side as well to see who is applying and get a bit of a an account at least of this person and um 
to all the scholars who are thinking, okay, but this is a bit more effort than usual. Yes, it is. But also, yes. you know, um, you would... <laughs> It's just simply creating an account. It takes like a minute, I suppose, even less. Yeah. Um, and when you look at all the scholarships and people just saying, hey, I want a scholar, you're being, you know, washed away in a sea of thousands of people. Where with this, your subset is much smaller. You have a much better chance to actually get a cool scholarship here uh, from Hutch. So that's the reason why I like it so much. And, and well done on you guys yeah, for getting it. Thank you. And to, and to your point, yes, it raises the bar a little bit. But that's a good thing for the people that are serious about wanting to do this because and, and I, don't, I don't want to get super deep into this part because I, I want to stay dialed in and really focused on this for folks. Uh, but play to earn is many, many different games, right? We're dialed in on Axie today and that's what we're focused on. But scholars have the opportunity when they find the right manager and it's the right match and you're done with all of your energy and what? If there are multiple games that you can be playing for that same manager scholar relationship my goodness a scholar's income can just you know do this yeah so it's really really a win for the scholars and for the managers because they don't have to go find different people to do some of these things it's fantastic exactly so if you're watching if i understand you correctly hutch so suppose after axie you start doing pegasi scholarships you have the same kind of pool. People can just apply yet again from the account that they've created, right? Yes, and and may not even need to apply if that a relationship is already established and there's a trust that that uh, has already been built. And then that manager expands into other games. They may approach the scholars that they're already working with because that trust is so important. Once they've got that in place, then yeah, let's just just add on. Right, awesome. add on a couple different awesome. games. No, that's that's fantastic. No, that sounds really, really exciting. And I'm excited to start looking at the axes and start pulling out the scholarship team. Yeah. So, Hutch, if you wouldn't mind, take it away. If you can share your screen. I'm gonna do, uh, I'll do a screen share here. Uh, and what I want to show first, just as a recap uh, from conversation that, that we've had uh, here is, and. You'll have to forgive my, can you see my screen? Yes, we got a nice pink drawing. <laughs> okay, you'll have to forgive my drawing with the mouse doodles, right? That's because awesome. I've never been good at that. I don't expect I ever will. Uh, but here's what I've got so far. So the circles are one team. We've got the plant here, uh, the, the aqua and the reptile. The squares are another team. I've got like little asterisks here next to two on the Charlie team because we're going to add to that. And then on the underlines, I've got two players on a Delta team that we're going to add a frontliner to. So uh, before we kind of launch into the marketplace, uh, do you want to kind of speak to the teams that we have here real quick? Sure, absolutely. Can I ask just that you um, enlarge the paint picture uh, just as full screen so that people can see um, a bit more on it? If you, Yeah, just maximize button. That helps already. Is that and any better? I'm not sure. That makes I'm, it not sure. Not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So before I get started, so I see Kramer, you're asking how to get a scholarship. Uh, so there's a link at the top here um, at playtoearnscholars.com. Uh, look at that and uh, just go through the steps, register an account, and then there's actually going to be a job posting specifically for Axie Explained Stream today, and you could get one of these uh, scholarships that are available today. So go check that out. Yes. Okay, so looking at the team, yes, so we built uh, these together with some of the axes that you have, and today we're buying a few more to finish off the teams and get you some nice, well-rounded teams. So the f ones we have created are already quite well-rounded. Um, so the alpha team, starting with those, the ones in the circle, right? So your first plant here, it's an energy beast. This guy is going to create so much energy, it's going to come out of the wazoo, as uh, Kagejin of <laughs> other youtuber likes to say <laughs> so you have carrot leaf bug and serious three massive energy generating cards and then pumpkin just to make it a very very tough axie to get through which is going to protect your um aqua nemo so this guy is just going to help with energy and this the reason why everyone we have two axes that can actually generate energy is because this final backliner is an absolute unit an absolute beast but it's a very hungry and energy hungry beast <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> so it's running the tiny dino which recently got a buff so that's a great great news for us 
uh, it does a bit more damage after round four. And then Bone Cell and Karastis, both very strong cards. One for card draw, one for damage against fast axes, which most axes facing this guy will be faster than him. Uh, those unfortunately got slight debuffs, but still very viable, very strong cards. And then you have the stun. So ideally, with someone of this team is going to want to continue generating energy. Hopefully, you're basically using the first two axes as punching bags, keeping them out maybe killing an axe uh, on their side and then that final guy can basically solo the two other axes that are left uh, if it has enough energy and that's the point creating massive amounts of energy with the first two uh to, to so for 2v1 and 1v1 that guy's a monster i don't think that guy's gonna die, die to anything basically <laughs> uh the amount of shield card draw and damage it can do uh it should be it should be uh it should be about everest for most axes so that's that's some good news we have there okay moving on bravo team bravo team yes so bravo team has an interesting but very cool uh front plant right so it runs cattail so as everyone knows um some of the bugs specifically discord bugs are quite strong in the meta um they have received sight nerfs but they're still prevalent they're still going to be there and cattail is like the ultimate opposite card so hatch for if you don't know these discard bugs what they do is they continue discarding the cards that you have right and what cattail does is every time it gets hit by a beast or bug move you draw a card so the whole idea of them killing all your cards is actually negated by this one card that costs zero energy so it's like the ultimate counter you love to see that one on it but that is not its only functionality it has a big shield with the slippery shield at the back, biggest shield gaining card in the game. And then it has damage with cactus. Again, it received a slight nerf, but actually very correctly so. It was overpowered, but it's still very strong. And then it still has energy steel as well. And the nice thing is with the series now, you can combo it with a zero cost card called Cattail to just get energy steel so easily. Um, so this guy is just a very well-rounded frontliner. It's going to sustain, it negates some strategies, it's going to steal energy, and it's going to do some damage. It's basically the whole package. Yeah, let me let me piggyback off of that. So, so those of you scholars and potential managers that are watching this, I want you to listen to what Axie Explained is telling you as far as uh, the benefits and, and all those kinds of things. So there are golden nuggets that you can take and implement in your gameplay. So this recap on, on these different things, you are getting an, a, literally a master telling you uh, how you can play some of these axes and improve your MMR, and ultimately improve your SLP and make more money for your family. So make sure you're grabbing on to some of these nuggets and don't just wait and watch for the uh, the segment where we're going to start choosing axes. This part right here is literal gold. So I just want to just wanted to add that in there, buddy. So uh, go ahead and, and hop on to the midliner for Bravo if you're if you're ready. <laughs> Thanks, Arch. I, I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. Um, so Bravo, the midliner. We're looking at this unique aqua. Well, it's not that unique. It uses an old simple idea of the shrimp, right? So when you're going up against teams, specifically also a team that is very much prevalent is teams with birds on the back line so this what this shrimp aqua allows you to do is actually to target those at the back so shrimp plus a double angry lamb and a, and a swift escape or shrimp with two swift escapes and angry lamb it's going to kill off that bird for you uh basically cripple the opponent's strategy in that setup um and it has a little bit of heal with an enemy also it received a slight debuff uh well actually quite a big debuff in terms of its damage but it still receives the same amount of HP back. Um, and then you have the all-rounder, the one we all know, uh, the Terminator at the back, basically almost still the 1v1 king of axes with two stuns in your snail shell and your tiny turtle and your much needed beast damage in this or bug damage in this lineup with your lagging and thorny caterpillar. So this guy, you're gonna play him in the early game to try and get rid of the opposing plant you're going to play them in a the late game just to finish off a 1v1. Um, so all in all, a very well-rounded team that's looking at destroying. It's a very kind of reactive team in my mind. Arch. So it is good against a strategy with a bird. It's good against strategy with bugs. So you don't have one set strategy with this team. You're a well-rounded team that can 
respond to many different strategies and actually have a good chance at winning. So this yeah, would be... So, so scholars, scholars can win with this team, is that what you're telling me? No, absolutely. And it would be best suited in the hands of a scholar that has can really think, right? Can really understands the game and can think a bit further because um, you'll get some teams that they have a basic strategy and this is what you want to execute and it's good at what it does. But this team is for someone that can think on their feet, can think for themselves, can read the game. Uh, they'll do really well with this team, I believe. Excellent. Awesome. Then, so the two teams that aren't done, we have the Charlie team, uh, which we need a front line for. So we're, today we're going to be buying the plant for this uh, Charlie team. But basically, yet again, the backliner, we're sitting with another Terminator. Um, and then in the mid lane, we're sitting with a double anemone uh, aqua. Unfortunately, it did receive the debuff, but the healing will still be extremely strong. So, Hutch, what mm -hmm. we're going to be looking for this team, we only have one zero cost card on the back line. We're going to be looking for another very in energy hungry plant, something that can generate a lot of energy to help keep that aqua, um, you know, pumping out the abilities and healing and doing damage all in one. So that's the idea for, for the plant we're looking for that team. Excellent. The next team I'm actually the most excited for for building for uh, your stream uh, is the Delta team because I love your uh, Delta midliner, that beast. Um, the beast is so cool. It first of all, it looks very menacing. Um, <laughs> but second of all, it is really a, um, if I could put this in PG-13 terms, uh, it's a mind, it screws with people's minds, basically, right? I want to say something else, but it's going to screw with people's minds because <laughs> of two abilities, Rice and Goda. So for those of you that don't know, and Rice actually received a buff, so it's even stronger now. But the tail move Rice, when comboed with another card, steals an energy from the opponent, the same as Sirius, except it does so much more damage than Sirius does. It's a 90-20 card, so against the opposing plant it's just gonna uh, eat it for like 110 120 damage something like that something crazy with 90 and um it also has goda on the mouth so it destroys that just destroys energy purely so people are going to be sitting there and thinking oh i just have to play all the cards i can each turn because this guy's going to destroy or steal my energy so you're going to be running against teams that are going to really try and overrun you with this team but that's what makes this guy quite strong because the the we're going to be looking for a plant that is really buffy in the front to help stop the barrage of attacks that's going to come your way but even if they do the backliner we have is a bird which has dark swoop the backdoor ability it received a nerf as well it's got a bit more a bit less damage but uh, that's not the end of the world it's got the classic aroma and pigeon post combo so you can sacrifice the bird in the cases where it needs to be you can transfer the debuff to certain axes at the back so if you want to destroy them rather and it has the risky feather which actually unintentionally received a buff in the new meta because of how the skill damage change happens so it does now does more damage it's the strongest card single card in the game it does 150 damage with the new skill change, it, it does even more, I've noticed. So, uh, very strong card there. So, you're sitting with a, the setup for a classic, classic team in Axie, which is a plant, beast, bird. Uh, but yours is unique to the level where I really love it with the Rice and Goda. Um, nice. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting a plant for those. Um, and yeah, that's basically a setup. And uh, we're going to be looking at buying a few plants right now. Were there any more? Just give me a reminder here, Hutch. Apart from these four teams, Alpha to Delta, with the two plants we need, uh, are there any other acts you're looking at getting today as well? well I'd say let's start with that. Okay. And, uh, and if we have enough uh, funds available to build out another good team, we can do that if we need to to bring in some more dollars to build out uh, a fifth team. Uh, maybe we'll do that on a on a, a, a separate stream and, and bring and build an entire team for scholars to be able to not only play with, but maybe through their input in the live chat, uh, offer some input. What kind of team would they want to see? Cool. And, uh, and if they offer input to where we're able to match that and put it together, Maybe they can get the team that they choose. They choose, yeah. Well, I, I can see one person asking for a Trump team. 
um and no it's 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 not the president it's the it's the ability <laughs> um so trump actually received a bit of a buff it's always been an interesting concept trump is one of those teams where you, it's one ability that when a different axie of the same ability does it it does even more damage so you'll have to build a whole team that all have this trump move um but i mean it's it's an interesting concept and they look so cool because they the uh it's a headpiece it's literally trump's headpiece so it, it looks <laughs> it looks very interesting it looks very cool and, and and even if you're watching this on replay we're going to be monitoring these comments here and there so feel free to go ahead and comment below if you're watching this on replay and uh, tell us what you would like to see because we're going to be building more and more teams over time and uh, if you've got a team that you want to see put together and you want to be able to play it and make uh, make an income off of it by all means we invite you to do so awesome awesome Arch, while you pull up the um, marketplace so we can start looking for axes i just see a question from timothy aka the nicest guy i know he's one of the people in my guild <laughs> Um, he's asking, is an enemy bird still a viable team? I think he's specifically referring off to the debuffs it received. Uh, Timothy, yeah, I think it is. Um, I think the nerfs might be adjusted, like uh, the Joker is saying, or Front Run Hitling saying in chat. Um, I think it's still viable. Uh, it's just not going to be as overpowering as it always used to be, right? Okay. All right, cool. So we're cool. back uh, we're, we're back to the marketplace here. Yeah and uh let's uh let's go shopping okay so first off uh for if you can just have that paint up again so you can just look at there are two different plants i know one is big on energy uh, that's for the um charlie team we need a big energy gate there and for the delta team we need a really buffy plant so those are two objectives here right um okay. so let's take a look at the energy gainer first now i think for the plant we're gonna have to be looking for something with leaf bug um, that's the move number one we need. All right. So what, while, uh, while we're plugging these in, yeah. uh, I'll share with you too. Uh, I may have interest if, if, if it's cost effective to do so, to look into breeding. So okay. if you want to, you know, have some commentary around that as we're doing this, I don't know if we want to have, uh, you know, the breed count be super low if, if we want a certain level of purity. So before we kind of get... Uh, real deep in the actual cards do you want to speak to that a little bit sure yeah so if you're if you're looking for breeding uh in a cost effective manner i would say you must limit your breed count to a maximum of two um, ideally we'd be looking for axes with zero breed count just to make it as effective and efficient as possible um, and the purity in genes is something we can uh, look at you don't have an extension called uh, freaks or French and Italy, if you don't mind can you please post the extension that you use for yours but that's basically an extension that shows the genes of the axi a bit more it might be something we um, need to download is that this oh okay you got one okay fantastic no, okay, okay you're good you're good you're good French and Italy's one is uh, even better uh, even much more in depth but this is going to be good I'd enough love to see that okay you'll, you'll sure. post it I'm sure uh, if you're still listening um, but okay so then we'll use that to look at, at the at the actual um, genes of the axi. So we need, okay, cool. He sent it, it's in chat. Uh, after the stream, I'll just share it with you as well. Um, but yeah, we're looking at leaf bug. Um, I think now we have to make some decisions. Um, I think we can do Sirius as well. That's gonna be the, one of the easiest one is leaf bug plus Sirius. And then after Leaf Buckler series, I think for most scholars, uh, this is our energy gainer, right? Um, we can look yeah. at playing something like a uh, Carrot would be good or Hatsune. So I would recommend either one of those two, Carrot or Hatsune. What's the second one you said? How do you spell it? H-A-T-S-U-N-E. Uh, there we go. Hatsune. Hatsune. Um, and then carrot is one of the other options you can put in both they'll show which one yeah that one correct okay. then for the back card you usually go with pumpkin we can stick in the lines of using a pumpkin um that could be good uh, i think either use i'd say go absolutely for pumpkin because we're using uh leaf disguise the other option would have been slippery shield like your bravo team's plant has but because we have leaf 
uh, Leaf Disguise or Leaf Bug. That one combos with plant abilities, and Slippery Shield is not a plant ability. So let's keep it mm -hmm. as pure as we can. Um, and we have a few options here. Uh, so we have great options. And um, let's take a look at those genes. So the first all all two breeds, right? So, but this one has really good genes, except for the winghorn, and that is actually a deal breaker. If you get winghorn on a plant, it is almost as good as dead. So I would say don't go for the, yeah, th that's a very risky one. This second one, it's very risky on the mouthpiece because it's got risky fish, it's got axi kiss. Uh, I would also give that one a skip. Then this one, Sirius is strong, leaf bug is quite strong, it has a cuckoo. Um, this one is relatively strong, not not great. I would almost not a hundred percent feel breed, uh, comfortable breeding with it. I would I would probably move on. Now this one is probably more in a range of uh, very interesting because even though the last leaf bug is a little branch, little branch can be one of the strongest moves on a plant for the head. Um, so I think this one can be a really good pickup. You also have shrimp and a cute bunny. Cute bunny won't be the end of days. It, might, it won't be ideal, but you'll definitely still get value. Shrimp will be horrible, but it's an R2 gene. So I think that is this is a strong enough axi to buy. Okay, so we want to make a, make a run at this here. Let's see if it's available. Yeah. Um, so front of thing saying you can also search for gene purity using the marketplace. Uh, yes, but remember that we're using leaf bug. So the gene purity is already going to be very weird, right? Um, because we have mixed genes, it's not going to be all plant, right? So do you want to speak it. anything about uh, uh, about the stats or the abilities here? No, it's it's just about okay. your perfect perfect plant here. It's the fifty nine HP um, plant. So I think this is this is going to be yeah, this is the perfect plant for what we're looking at for the energy for that first one. The second guy is a bit more interesting. We're looking at something that is quite tough right so um something that's more on the tough realm if we can just look at the delta team again we have one energy gainer with rice so we still need something that can generate energy with this guy um but we might not be as as pushed for it because we have both goda and rice so okay. if we go back to the marketplace we can go the leaf bug route um that might be one but, of but, the best uh, what do you want me to clear out here um, I think for now, clear out the carrot and the Hatsune, perhaps. Well, although they might be strong, yeah, I'm not sure. Clear out the Sirius for sure. Let's let's see what we can do instead of the Sirius. Because Sirius, I would in this team. Oh no, sorry, sorry, Hutch. Let's keep Sirius, right? And the, I'll tell you the reason why. Because with this guy, if you have Rice, Goda, and Sirius, you have so much energy destruction and destroying in your opponent. You're basically guaranteeing that they're going to be playing all their cards all turn because it, the risk is too high for them not to, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now let's take a look at what uh, what could be good. And ironically, this potato leaf that they have on it is one of the cards with the highest uh, shield on tail at the moment. Uh, let me oh, check for myself. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, it got a buff. It got a buff. So I'm just going to take a look at. Uh, the Axie world to see what cards we might uh, want to look at for a tail. So I think ideally we're going to be looking for a tail that is plant, but we might have a bit of uh, bit of uh, uh, what do you call it flexibility there. But I think for now you can put in uh, potato leaf or hatsune for the plant tail. So we're going for buffiness, everyone. So. I'm trying to get as much shield on this guy as possible right now. So it's either that, and then for the back, still pumpkin would be the best. So I think with this, we have uh, we have basically what we need. If we want to look at the breeding, we can see what we're getting out with them, with the genes. Okay. Yeah, this. this I think uh, I think this is still set at two. Yeah. I've got uh, purity set at five. Should I move that to six? um i don't know exactly what yeah you can keep it at five no you have to keep it at five because six it doesn't work well, let's yeah, keep it at five <laughs> because the the head the head ability is that uh is a is a bug move so that's why we have to keep it at five right 
<laughs> people asking Fillerfan. Uh Fillerfan, but we don't we have leaf bug, so Fillerfan is a bird move so it won't combo. Um but it's a cool, interesting idea at the very least. Uh do you wanna take a look at those genes? Let's see which one of these might be the best. Um, it looks like it reset. It's not there. You might yeah, have to... it sometimes goes offline a little bit. Then you just have to reset and hope it there pops we go. up. Yeah. Yep, it, it did. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, serious, serious. Leafbug. Okay, so this one is a little bit too on the weak side for breeding. I would suggest going to the next um, of all the ones it has at the bottom. This one is very interesting. It's unfortunately the only problem is... The bottom three are all very good genes, and even the genes that aren't the same, they're all very viable options. But your top with the nutcracker and piranha might just be too much to to risk it. So I would say go for the for the next. Uh, yeah, the unko. This one is very interesting, actually. This hey, one's very interesting. It. So the series is is full on, so that's strong. The leaf bug is a little weak. It has Unko and Cactus. Unko is basically a very high shield uh, card. It has a hundred shield on it, um, but you're gonna lack a bit of energy, and it has thirty attack. And the ability is basically what it does is, the next guy that's gonna attack this Axie will skip it and attack the one behind it. But because it's on a plant, it will basically never happen. So um, we wouldn't go for that. We actually have a good suggestion from chat. If it's a stall tank, I suggest using uh, herbivore. That's actually a very good suggestion. That might actually be something we should uh, look at as well as herbivore. Yeah. Man, you've got like the smartest audience in all of Axie, man. You've got some really, really smart people, man. Love to see. And, and engaged. I mean, you've got a smart, engaged community, man. And that is just... That is hard to create, so kudos to you, and, and thank you for the for the suggestion here, too. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, uh, Needy Didu. I actually missed most of what you're saying, unless my headset died, but uh, I think I got most of it. <laughs> um, okay, so the herbivore, unfortunately, we don't have many herbivores, but I actually think maybe it might be a good idea, Hutch, to remove the Sirius. I, I like the suggestion they have. I think herbivore might be a much better move than Sirius in this situation. Unfortunately, the price went up quite a bit now. Oh yeah, that got, that doubled. That doubled. So, is that first one viable? Let's look at the genes. If that's in your price range, it actually has quite decent genes. Uh, even the snail shell it has between the pumpkin and water kang, you don't mind too much. So, uh, it might be viable. Uh, this one. You could also look at the one to the right of it. Let's look at that. Mm, no, this one this one won't work. It has too many uh, genes you don't want, like Karasti's Imp. Uh, this one... Yeah, the Merry Antenna Blue Moon... I think it's a little rough. It might be a bit too rough for breeding. Uh, Incisor and Green Thorns. This one could work. This one could be interesting. Uh, I, would actually, I would actually suggest number one more, but... Um, yeah, so Incisor is still a good strong move. It has decent shield and does good damage and slows the opponent. Green Thorns is a zero cost card that when comboed with any plant card, doubles its shield. So that's going to be strong on a plant that has mostly plant abilities. So it could work. Um, and then yeah, the rest and of it course, is... Hmm? Of course, Carrot and, and Hot Butt, generally speaking, are good car cards for a plant for this team. So are carrot and hot but acceptable genes for R1 and R2? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, if you uh, think about it, you're not actually going to be replicating this team just as is for the next time, right? When you breed, you might that's have point. different Great point. needs. Great point. So, but that's why carrot and hot but in general are good genes. That's what I'm saying. This is fine. Like, if you get a carrot or you get a hot butt on this axe, if you breed it, you don't mind as much. Um, but there are some some like moves that are inexcusable that would make the whole Axie horrible, like Smart Shot, for example. None of these abilities that it has on here would make the Axie bad. It would make it playable. Um, it might be a little bit weirder than usual, but it will still be strong enough to play with. So, and so in, a yeah. second, in a second, I'm going to ask for um, the, uh, the people in chat to participate. So get your keyboard ready or your thumb ready for uh, if you're on mobile. I'm going to ask for their help. But let's look at one more because these five here 
um, they, they, they move up a bit, but then it really jumps yeah. when, we, when we get to this one. So let's look at this, because this is the same price as the one we just talked about. This speak, one? speak to this one a little bit. No, so this one, this one's actually um, worse than the previous one you showed, just because of Axi Kiss and Risky Fish on its mouth. Or uh, from personal experience, I've had um, scholars play with those on frontline plants. They're just not good enough. They just don't have enough shield or enough value that they generate for you. Um, the well, it rest... sounds like sounds like you're kind of torn then between one and four. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so so let's put let's pull chat in and let's get them involved because uh, I'm willing to pay for either for this team and ultimately for the scholar that's going to be playing them. Uh, so in chat, I want you to put a one for this guy or a four for this guy on which one you think uh, we should uh, we should buy. Okay. And then uh, you just kind of watch that. I'll check uh, it out. So just, just, just to know. remind everyone, number four is they both have the same abilities. We're talking about genes here, right? Um, yes. So number four basically has incisor and green thorns on the off genes with carrot and hot bud and watering can. All very viable and number one is a much cheaper axi about fifty dollars cheaper it has um koi which this is one has hatsune cool. instead of potato leaf has that so instead of, oh so they are different actually yes thanks thanks Arch. good catch so axi one has hatsune instead of potato leaf right as soon 60 damage 80 shield but it disables any ranged attacks against the axi if it is attacked by one of them on its genes point of view, its genes are a bit weaker than number four um, because we have Koi. Koi is something we would not like to see on the Axie. The rest are all okay. Scaly Spear is something we are seeing these days. We're seeing Scaly Spear teams that can be quite strong. Snail Shell is quite good on a tank as well. It's good shield and it actually stuns the opponent, so it does its job. Um, I would say in total, its genes might be slightly weaker than number four, which is $50 cheaper. Number four running, Potato Leaf. 80 damage, 80 shield. Very interesting ability. If it's attacked by an Aqua ability, it will skip this Axie and go to the one behind it, which could be a double-edged sword for you, Hatch. If you're facing an Aqua team, you might not want to play the Potato Leaf because what's going to be sitting behind this guy is actually going to be your beast. So if an Aqua starts hitting your beast, it's actually going to hurt a bit. So it is a double-edged sword. Luckily, we don't see many aquas on the ladder these which, days which card which card is the one that does that potato leaf yeah so it has 20 more attack the same amount of shield as had soon but 20 more attack so okay let me see number one is worth bang for bucks and number one is for the budget and the good disable one we have three for one one for four yeah, it's overwhelmingly one. About seven people said, let's go for number one. About eight people All right. said, let's go for number one. Let's do it. So, yeah, there we go. Thanks for helping, chat. We have yeah, guys, seven. thanks for hopping in there. Yeah. And this guy, Herbivore, if you go look down uh, there, Hutch, Herbivore, the reason why we picked it, it has 75 shield, much more shield than Sirius, 75 attack, mm. and it heals for the amount that it attacks on plants. And you're mostly going to be attacking plants uh, with this Axie. So it was a really, really good suggestion. Um, who sent that in? I think it was Nido Dido, or who was it? Um, I can't remember right now. Are they, are they a scholar? Are they a player? No, actually not. I think they they might be, because sometimes they use different names in Discord than <laughs> on on uh, YouTube. Um, what I would say is make sure Nido that Dido. you go into playtoearnscholars.com and create a profile and apply for that would love to have somebody that's that's thinking kind of playing chess and not checkers uh, uh playing a team so i'd love to hear from you awesome yeah neither do that please go for a scholarship on playton.com we have one comment from jovi saying uh it's not like zigzag though zigzag can heal uh, against anything where herbivore only heals against plants yes jovi so good point there's two counter arguments here right so first of all Zigzag got a recent slight nerf where now it was 60 attack, 60 shield. Now it's 55, 55. So in total, it's really 50 stats less than Herbivore. That is a big consideration, right? So really take a think about that. Now, your argument about it healing against anything, although very true, 
the herbivore is going to heal against plant. So you're basically always going to be playing against plant first, right? Uh, plant versus plant. So you should be able to get the value from the healing there. If their plant is dead, then basically you don't need your plant as much anymore. Your beast and your bird have so much variety of damage, you're going to be able to go through the rest. The heal on the plant won't be as important. Um, so we're good there. We're just waiting until their plant can be dead and we can run through the rest of them. So it, it's a good consideration, but I think the 50 stats is way more valuable. And I think someone else is saying um, the mosquito. So it could have gone for mosquito on the mouth. Absolutely, except mosquito is yet again a bug move. And because we're using leaf bug, they it's taking one less uh, card we can combo with away. So for our energy efficiency, it wouldn't have been the best ability. We would have struggled to get the energy from the leaf bug, right? So, although great suggestions, guys, and we might have had, uh, we could have done a different team, although we would have been a really weird plant if we did Mosquito for the energy game. We'd have to probably do Nemo or something on the tail, um, maybe a carrot. It would have been a bit weirder. I think this is the most efficient bang for buck stats and making it really tanky for for the shield. Oh, Nido, Nido. So that, yeah, sorry. And that one is for Delta, is that right? That's what that's who we were building out for our, our beast and bird? Absolutely. We built it for the Delta team. So, um, Ajovi, it's a pleasure. Great explanation. And Hutch, sorry to disappoint you, but Nido Dido is already a uh, scholar. But she says, he, they say thanks for the compliments. Yeah. And, uh, hey, if something changes, you know, I, I don't want to go, you know, kind of poaching other people's scholars. If you're happy where you are, fantastic. Glad you're in the play to earn ecosystem. Uh, if there's other games that you want to look to, to maybe add, uh, that may be a reason to go to uh, Play to Earn Scholars and have a, uh, a profile there to add to the Axie. But certainly, if you're happy where you are with Axie, don't change that. Exactly. Absolutely stay where you are. Good. Thanks. Thanks. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, just the last comment here. I say Juzo Chan is saying, the thing is Herbivore and Hatsune is really situational cards. Well, so a counter argument to that is you're not really playing Atsune for the range disable. You're playing it for the stats, the 80 shield, 60 damage, and to combo with the leaf bug. That's actually why we are playing that card. That is why we went for this build. We're going for a really buffy plant tank, right? Um, the same is going for the herbivore, but the herbivore situational of healing gives a plant. That will happen 99% of games, or let's say 95% of games. You'll be against a plant anyway in the front. So the situation is already created for you. Um, so, yeah, a good point, although it's slightly mitigated by um, the setup, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, I guess. My bad. No, don't don't worry. Thanks for the comment. Uh, great comment. It really is a great comment. And that's how we learn from each other, right, is to, to chat about these things. So, yeah, great comment, Jesus. Cool. But now we have our team sorted. Do we do you have any way of showing the teams? Yeah, here we go. So uh, everyone, just for a reminder, uh, do we want to quickly rename them into their uh, according teams so we can see? Okay, yeah. So yeah. let's hop in here. So that's our Delta. I got to look, look at my nomenclature first. Okay, team. Okay. Delta team frontliner. And then the other guy would be uh, Where is he hiding? the very he top go. left. That's our Charlie team frontliner. Okay. Right. So everyone, just a reminder, if you're looking to apply for a scholarship, the tag message at the top of the chat, playtoearnscholars.com. Even if you already have an Axie scholarship and you're looking for, in the future, perhaps, new NFT games or other pre games, games, playtoearnscholars.com is a place where you can find all of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the play-to-earn economy is becoming more and more of where we're going, not less and less, which, which is why playtoearnscholars.com became such a such a needed thing and, and is it okay if i share what that home page looks like can i throw yeah, that yeah 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 let's take a look let's give people uh because there's okay. people in the chat asking can i become a scholar so uh ish chan so if you want to become one go to that link and this is what's going to look like right and i just take us through what she has to do here. 
register here free. Uh, you're going to create uh, create a profile, um, be, and uh, just here's a pro tip for scholars: uh, use your actual uh, smile and your your actual face for your profile picture because managers love to see who they're talking to. I mean, if you got a super cool avatar, that's great. This is not the place for it. If you're wanting to get hired by the best managers, show them who you are because they like to see who they're investing their money into. So that's a pro tip just for the people watching this stream. But you're going to click on the scholars uh, register here for free. There's going to be a job posting that is just for the uh, uh, actually explained live stream. Let me see if I can easily uh do that on the fly and show show you what that looks like if not we'll skip it um but uh, uh let me just see if that pops up quick yep here we go so i'm going to pull that in so here's just the top two so uh, actually explain training tuesday scholarship opportunity this is going to be the job that you're that you're looking for that's what you're gonna uh pop in there and hopefully we can uh, we can connect with you here real soon and put some of these uh these these tools in your hands to go and uh, uh create some uh income for your family awesome awesome great thanks such thanks yeah so everyone that's that's how to apply it's gonna be it's quite simple and uh, trust me you guys are on the end because i'm sure not many people know about play to earn scholars.com yet so you have a really good opportunity to actually earn a scholarship through through the site um should you absolutely follow. yeah so great stuff Okay, Hutch, well, yeah, there we go. We've got our Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta team. I know Francho Nettling, my uh, good friend of business partner, says he loves the name Uniformity um, because <laughs> um, he he tends to be a bit more OCD on naming and I'm a bit more, yeah, okay, this is that guy, <laughs> that guy, that guy. So he, he loves it. He's like... <laughs> I'm, I'm not OCD, I'm CDO. Do you know what that is? No, <laughs> please elaborate. So CDO is OCD alphabetized. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so you're you're the next next CD. Oh, next level. But, but you can see here if you look in the upper corner, you can still see my screen. I still got some money, so okay. uh, we can look at. We, we're, we'll go ahead and cut the stream today, uh, but uh, but you and I can talk offline and see if it makes sense to maybe have another stream. Let's build another team, but let's get let's get these teams out there working with uh with some scholars first and uh maybe maybe we'll bring uh bring some more people back together and uh and make another team awesome and i think we can even ask chat chat uh maybe i'd ask you tweet me interesting team builds we can try i've seen some people talk about sponge yes. i love the idea of running a sponge team with the new meta so if you guys have an idea for a team please tweet us and you know hutch and i can get to building that and you could actually i think hutch maybe it's fair to say the person who builds a really good team and is looking for a scholarship, they might be like on the top of the list of, of maybe getting one of those scholarships, right? You know what? Let's do that. Okay. You want to? Do you want to kind of put that challenge out? Yeah. Give us some good team builds. You can, if you're watching this on replay, add it into comments. You can go ahead and put it into chat. But do you want to drop your 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 Twitter in the uh, in the chat stream so people will have that? Yeah. Let if me do that. Real uh, quick. That's a good point. Let me yeah. let me do that real quick. Or, and, Maybe go ahead and include that in the description too, so people on replay. But uh, yeah, give us some some really awesome builds, and you could be a front runner for playing that team and not having to buy it yourself. Exactly, exactly. Also, awesome. great challenge. I'll, I think I'll tweet about it as well afterwards. Um, are we going to put a budget to it? Is the zero point one two one? Is that going to be a budget for a team uh, that uh, with the with that they have to build? Well, so that's a great question. Um, let me put it this way. I want the scholar to be given all of the tools they need to win. Okay. So if I need to, to buff the budget here a little bit, in your mind, to be able to get that team put together that they suggest, I'm willing to put more money on the line to help make that happen. Okay, awesome. Well, that's, that, I mean, that's amazing. Thanks. Uh, I think... Well, 0 0.121, I think you get a decent team, but I think let's not put the restriction on it. Um, let's see what people come up with, but I'll ask them to, you know, uh, keep the price in mind. It is a factor, uh, not so much as saying keep keep it below, 
zero point whatever ETH. And let's see, let's see what people come up with. That sounds great. And is there is there any other place that they can connect with you? Obviously, that you want them to uh, uh, like the like the stream, subscribe to your channel, uh, connect with you on Twitter. As far as some of these builds, any other places that are really good for people to connect with you? No, Arch, thanks. That's basically it. Yeah, it's my Twitter, it's my YouTube channel, and uh, that's where I'm at. I'm looking at starting Twitch soon, but I'm having some technical difficulties. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll get into that soon as well. But yeah, basically uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube, that's where you can find me. And thanks everyone who has subscribed and thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for joining today. Hutch, thanks to you for being on the stream and being so patient with me for getting this set up uh, after a while. It was really nice having you, my friend. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And uh, let's let's see what, what other things people can build and uh, let's do it again. Cool. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks everyone and uh, have a fantastic day. Cheers. See ya.